Hello everyone, this is Rich from the Super Cypher Windows and I'm pleased to be with you today for this walkthrough of the Windows 10 Anniversary Update. This is Microsoft's second major update for the year old operating system and it is officially Windows 10 version 1607 under Microsoft's new naming scheme. The 16 is for the year that it was uh, built in, published, and the 07 is for the month that the main build was compiled. This demo I'm doing for you today is on Windows 10 build 14393.10 this is a cumulative update that was released late last night on the 1st of August, the eve of the release of the anniversary update to the general public, and it was mainly bug fixes. This is the third cumulative update that build 14393 has gotten since it was designated as the release build, and it's, again, just fixing bugs and things like that. Now, as I mentioned in my Windows 10 anniversary update review over on the Super site, there's a lot of fit and finish in this update for Windows 10, and I'll point some of that out as I move through this hands-on video. So there are three key areas that received uh, most of the attention when it comes to the Windows 10 Anniversary Update. Not the only attention, but they are the main focal points, and that is Cortana, Windows Inc. Workspace, and Security. But there are other spots that receive some revisions and new features as well. So let's start with the Start menu. First off, when you install Windows 10 Update, you'll see this is your default layout of your Start menu. You have your two columns of, of, app, of app live tiles, and uh, you can click on those. You can pin those to the taskbar. You can unpin them from the start menu. You still have the hamburger menu over here, which just gives you the names of all the different icons that are there, the start menu, your user account, settings, and power. Um, you have the recently added category, which lets you see the most recently installed apps. You have the most used category, which allows you to see the apps you use the most on this system. And then you'll see suggested apps at times from Microsoft. Now, all three of those can be turned off in Start Menu settings, so you do not have to get those. And then below that is your All Apps menu, which is a long, straight, vertical uh, list of apps, alphabet, alphanumeric. If you were to click on any letter, you would get this quick navigational option to browse by letter to those different apps. So very handy. Um, another thing I want to point out about the Windows 10 Anniversary Update is a new developer feature and that is chaseable live tiles. And what that means is, is that when you see something on a live tile and you click on it, you expect to get to that, that article or that info or that email. Well, if developers build it in and support it, they are now chaseable. So when I click on this news icon with the picture of the vice president nominate, you will see that I get to that story. So that is developer by developer. They have to build the code into their live tile stuff so that it triggers correctly to take, to, take you to the right place but it's extremely handy and I think will help a lot as more and more developers get that out there. Now let's take a look at full screen when it comes to the start menu or start screen. Let me just set that to uh, full right now. We'll turn that on and we'll open that up. And as you can see, it's the same tile layout and it's still here along the left side. You still have the bar just showing the icons. Now the hamburger menu is there. If you click on that, you'll find out that we have a pin tiles option, we have an all apps option, and then you still have your standard user account settings and power stuff. So pin tiles is just like the smaller start menu. It shows you what you have pinned so that you can gain quick access to stuff and also see the live tile information. All apps now in Windows 10 anniversary update are full screen on the start menu when it's up full screen. So you can easily scroll through here you can find stuff. You can still navigate by the letters. You can right click to pin stuff to start. You can look under more and pin stuff to the taskbar. You can do your rate and review, your share and your uninstall just like you could before. So very handy. Let me put this back on the standard settings for the rest of the walkthrough. So start menu, you've got a lot of nice new little tweaks. You see some icons on the side that are different and updated, which is very nice. And also if you noticed when I opened up settings, this is one of the things that's been updated is you now have these icons that designate that associate with the category that you're clicking on. So that's another nice little fit and finish thing that they've added. So let's talk about the taskbar next. Now, uh, if you look at this, you see the first prominent area is Cortana and Cortana's interface. This is where you click to bring up Cortana. You can get to Cortana settings. You can get to her notebook up here. You can see your summary of articles and other content that you've given her access to so that she can keep up with your schedule, your email, your packages, your flights, whatever it is you've allowed her to do. Now, there's been a lot of talk about Cortana not being able to be turned off. And while there is not an on-off button, you can sign out of Cortana. 
and you will not, and Cortana will not assist you with anything or track anything you're tracking. And you'll just have to use the basic search features, which are still through the Cortana interface, in order to get through what you need to do on your system. Task view icon is still here right next to Cortana. This can be removed. You just right click and un turn off show task view button and it will go away. Let me put that back on because I want to show you a couple things here. So I have two desktops open. If I wanted to open a third virtual desktop, I could. It's extremely handy if you want to do several different things and you're on a single screen. The functionality has not changed much here. What they have done is given you the ability now to put an app on all of your desktops. So if I open up an app like File Explorer and I go back to the Task View button and I right click, I now have options to snap it left, snap it right, to move it to one of the other desktops. I can show this window on all desktops and if I do that, you'll see down here that the same window is now available on all of the virtual desktops I have running. If I want to um, I change that, I can just right click and turn that off. And now if I right click and say show windows from this app on all desktops, I can now open those apps individually on each desktop and actually browse to different categories or different folders and things like that. So you can see I have the ability to go to different spots when I do that. So it's very handy. I, I've personally not found much use for the desktops. I just have not been able to, to find a way to use it in, that makes me more productive. Uh, for some of you, that may not be the case, and I hope you're able to put it to use. I'd really like to see them tweak those and give us some saveable attributes so that we can save virtual desktops so that when you start up, it automatically begins, and then you can set up desktops for different types of tasks. That, in case you're wondering, is my Harley-Davidson clock, noting the hour is noon. All right, moving forward. Um, elsewhere on the taskbar, I wanted to show you a couple new icon layouts that we have. The first one is the Action Center. That's right here. It has been moved to the right of the system clock. And then you have the Windows Ink Workspace button. That is, exists on hardware that is pin or touch compatible. It will appear there. If it's not, you can right click on the taskbar and you can say, show me the Windows Ink Workspace button. And so you can get access to that because what's handy is, and we're going to talk about Windows Ink Space in a minute, um, is that many of those apps work with mouse and keyboard and you can even use your finger in some to draw and annotate and things like that. Uh, both Windows Ink Workspace and Cortana are available in this Winter 10's anniversary update above the lock screen, which means you can say, hey, Cortana, if it's active, and you can give her instructions, you can look things up, you can ask her questions, you can have her play music, um, or you can also, also use your pen and access the Windows Ink Workspace through single click and then get quick access to a note a sketch pad or a screen sketch, and we're going to go over those here right now. So on Windows Wink Workspace, when you click on that, you get this new sidebar, and there's three main apps that have been uh, either updated or added to the inking process on Windows 10. The first is Sticky Notes, just a great way for you to keep a note. It is uh, smart, so it knows when you write the word Friday. It highlights it, and then you can click on it, and that, that is called a, an actionable event. Now you can create a reminder from this sticky note because you wrote the word Friday. The next one I want to show you is Sketchpad. And I've got a full walkthrough of Sketchpad, sticky notes, and a screen sketch, which I'm going to show you in a minute, on the SuperSite for Windows, so I'm not going to go through all those things. But this allows you to freehand sketch. Uh, you may have seen the demos with the really cool ruler, so you can get straight edges. The ruler is also a block, so you can't draw through it. But very, very handy little thing to do freehand drawing for, for real quick access or quick notes if you want to just take a series of quick notes. And the last item in Windows Ink Workspace is, is Screen Sketch. This takes a screenshot of what you're looking at on the desktop, and then you can annotate it and say this is the recycle bin and then you can share it using the different uh, options up here you can share this to anything that is uh, shareable using the share contract in Windows 10 and then just the last part of it you'll see some recently used apps that support the pin and so those are listed here you'll get some suggestions for pin based apps and then you can always click here 
and go to the storefront, the new storefront for Windows Ink based apps that support inking and you can get access to all of those right here. So that is Windows Ink Workspace. Now let's talk a little bit about Action Center. As you can see, here's the Action Center icon and it's giving, this is called a badge. So when there's an emblem over top with a number, that's the number of pending notifications that I have not yet seen. Now the Action Center has changed a little bit. Um, you now have up to 14 quick action tiles. These are quick action tiles and the number of them will be based on your system and what your system supports because not all systems support touch for instance or not all systems support projecting. So you'll get a limited that will change based on what your system supports. And you can see here you'll see feedback hub feedback up in the action center. You'll see store notifications. This is new in the Windows 10 anniversary update. You get notified when apps are updated in the Windows Store, whether you do it manually or it's set to automatically update those apps. Even Windows Defender will now send you a brief alert and say, hey, we scanned your system. Here's the time we did it. There were no threats found. If there is a threat, you would obviously get an alert from Windows Defender to remedy that. And then um, organizing all of these right here, let me just go to all settings. Let me go to notifications and actions. And as you can see, here are the quick action tiles. And all I have to do is, is click and drag in order to organize those in the way I want. If I don't want to see all of them, I just come to add or remove quick actions and I can turn off the ones I don't want to have appearing there. So if there's some things you don't ever use, you can clean that up a little bit and take care of that. The other uh, thing on the taskbar that is associated with the action center and notifications is this right here over top of the mail icon. As you can see, there's a badge. It's marking me having 16 unread messages. And so that is another feature of the taskbar action center notifications process in Windows 10 anniversary update that is extremely handy as well. Let's talk a little bit about security features. Windows Hello, I think everybody's had a chance to understand what Windows Hello is. It is a facial or fingerprint reading that um, allows you to log into your system using your face, your fingerprint, um, and it sets up a pin to have a backup and all that kind of stuff. So it's very secure. I've even had it fail on me and you always have your PIN or even your system password, your Microsoft account password, to log in to your system running Windows 10. So very handy features on Windows Hello. The improvements made there are for, are, have been made in recognition and being able to better use those features. You can actually add more than one finger now. You can scan your face multiple times for say when you're wearing sunglasses, not wearing sunglasses, and things like that. Um, let me give you a quick example of a new feature in Windows 10 Anniversary Update that is the ability to use Windows Hello to authenticate your identity in other apps. And one that already supports this, and there's already quite a few of them, is OneDrive. So I'm going to click on the OneDrive icon on my taskbar, and it's going to pop up a little window here, and, and it's looking for my facial recognition, or I could choose to go with uh, fingerprint if this supported fingerprint or my PIN. But as you can see, it's recognized me, and now it tells me it's okay to continue, and you don't get in until it recognizes your face or your fingerprint. So very handy. Like I said, more and more apps are starting to support that in-app. And then, of course, you now have that ability in Microsoft Edge that websites that support it can implement that same type of security to log into your website, say your banking account, your, your personal accounts of any nature, without having to use a password because you've authenticated it with your facial recognition or your fingerprint. One other thing that I want to point out security wise is Windows Defender Offline. So if you open up settings, you go to update and security, and you go to Windows Defender, scroll down, you now have Windows Defender Offline. Now I also did a how-to on this yesterday on the super site for Windows, so that is available. You can go check that out. But this will take your PC, reboot it, and do a, a scan at boot up so nothing else is interfering with that scan in case you may have a pesky uh, infection, a malware, a virus, or something like that. But it, uh, it doesn't take very long. It says it can take about 15 minutes, but that completely is based on your system, how much data has to be scanned. And um, it's a handy way to use one additional feature. The other thing I want to mention that I can't show you on this system because I use Windows Defender as my antivirus is limited periodic scanning. So if you are a user that uses a third-party antivirus, anti-malware solution like uh, McAfee, Norton, or something like that, uh, you have to opt in, but you can opt in to have your system scanned once a month using Microsoft's very well um, 
well-versed scanning tools and check for uh, infections on your system. It's just another layer of security. It's not any extra resources. And once a month when you're not using your computer, it will run and it will take a look at your system to make sure your software is catching 100% of everything. So that's limited periodic scanning. Now, a little bit about Cortana above the lock screen and workspace, I already mentioned that. Um, let me show you Cortana edit sync settings. One of the features that's been added in Windows 10 anniversary update is the ability to sync notifications across platforms. So say from your Windows phone, you can get your notifications on your desktop through Cortana, through the Action Center. If the Android Cortana app just gained this ability and they still haven't gotten it set up for iOS yet. So if you open Cortana settings and you go to edit sync settings, you'll see, uh, it depends on your handset, how many things you'll see here, but I have a main get notifications from this PC, turn it on or off. That's from this PC on my phone. So that's going from PC to phone. Um, there's my Windows phone settings. And as you can see, I only have one thing turned on because I only want to get info from text messages on my Windows phone. I turned everything off because I get those notices on my Action Center already. So you don't want duplicates. And then the option to upload your uh, notifications to the cloud helps to eliminate some of the same notifications, but it's still a work in progress. So you want to be sure uh, before you turn that on that it is working uh, well. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Microsoft Edge now. It has received quite a few updates. Uh, the first is extension support. So I wanna show you real quick. There's the extensions option, get the extensions from the store. And the Windows Store now has its own portal to all the extensions for Microsoft Edge. Currently, these are the only ones available. Uh, you click on it, it's just like a store listing. It comes here, you install it, and then you go to the browser to set it up. Um, all extensions for Microsoft Edge are curated through the Windows Store. There is no option to sideload them. Uh, there are for developers, but for general consumers, this is where you want to get your extensions from because they've been scanned, screened, and validated before they've put it, been put in the store. I fully expect now that uh, Windows 10 Anniversary Update is getting out into the public that we should start to see this collection of uh, extensions gr grow for Microsoft Edge. Um, right click back button history. So let me let me pull up a, a story on here just so I can get a little bit of history on the uh, browser. So right click back history. If I right click, as you can see, it will take me directly back to previous stories I browsed to, or I can go to the history, which is over here on the right that shows you where I've been on the, the browser as well. So that is a new feature in the Windows 10 anniversary update. Pinning tabs, uh, there is a new option now to pin tabs. So if you have a tab that you like and you always want it to be open, you just go to the tab and right click, you choose pin, and it will now reduce down to just show the favorite icon. If you click on it, you're back at it. If you click out of it, here you are now. If I pin another one, it will just tuck up right next to the, the other pinned icons. You can unpin them at any time by right clicking and saying unpin, and it will return to full size. So again, that's a handy feature if you like to go to certain sites the moment you open your browser. The only issue I have with it is that when you want to close, it's always going to ask you want to close all tabs. If you check always close all tabs, you might accidentally close when you have browser tabs open that you do not want to close. So I choose to have to go through this step each time in order to not, when I'm working, lose a tab that I really don't want to lose. Uh, I mentioned the built-in biometric support for websites already through Windows Hello. The website has to provide the capability, but it will use the facial or fingerprints that you have logged in Windows Hello to do that. Windows Store has also been overhauled. You now have a common Windows Store across all devices, such as the desktop, tablets, mobile, and Xbox One. What that brings to you, though, now is a new, new category of games called Xbox Play Anywhere games. And that's basically you buy it in one spot, whether it be on your PC or your Xbox, and you play it in both locations without the need to purchase. And of course, you can still stream. The streaming from your Xbox to your desktop or your Windows 10 device is still there, has gotten much better, and I enjoy using that. You can even remotely turn on the Xbox if you want to, which I think is great. Uh, download and updates pages now show necessary updates and apps related to anything that's been updated. And I already showed you in the Action Center where things when you get an app update, how that goes. But now on the downloads and update page, any recent activity along with the history of when it was updated is shown to you now. So I can click on this and go straight to the product page. 
and see what that app is about. And if there's any other info I want to do or give it a review or something like that, I can also check for updates here. There is your library available still. What's happened with the library and what's updated in the Windows 10 Anniversary Update version is you now have the ability not to delete apps that you've previously installed, but you have the ability to hide them. So over here on the right hand side, you can see this little eye. If I was to click that, it would hide this app from my library. If I was to click the down arrow, it would download it right here without me having to go anywhere else. It would just start the download right here in the interface. And if I was to click on it, of course it will open the app page, give me the information, the install button, tell me what it works on, and as you can see, more and more of the apps are becoming universal, and especially with Xbox One, uh, now being on Windows 10 on the same kind of schedule and base OS, we're now seeing universal Windows platform apps on Xbox One. Um, dark mode, this is kind of the last thing I'll show you on this, and it was a feature that a lot of people have talked about. A lot of app developers have already put their uh, apps with an option that lets you choose a dark mode or a light mode. Now Microsoft in the Windows 10 Anniversary Update is giving you the same option for system apps, first party apps for the most part. Although any developer, if they put the right flag in their app, can check this setting I'm about to show you and it will turn their app into that same mode, whether it be light or dark. So you come to settings, you come to personalization and you click on colors and you scroll down to the bottom. And right here, it's called choose your app mode. It's either light or dark and right now it's set on light. If I was to click dark, immediately I get this dark theme. Uh, why they call it app mode, I'm not sure but it is related to the apps. Microsoft Edge browser has got its own dark mode. Many of the other apps have got their own dark mode, but slowly but surely, first party apps such as Groove Music, uh, Mail, Calendar, and those are starting to automatically inherit their setting from this setting. So if you like the idea of dark, and let me tell you, when it first started, I wasn't a big fan of dark, but I've grown to like it a lot. And in fact, I use it on my main desktop now, running the anniversary update to use the dark mode because I just, I much prefer it. And if you're on a laptop or, or a tablet, dark colors actually use less battery power than bright colors do, than white does. So that's another benefit of it as well. So in closing, I, you know, this is just a rundown of some of the key aspects of the Windows 10 anniversary update. There is a lot to explore and a lot to discover. So I hope you get the update over the next few days. It is a staged rollout, so everyone may not get it today, but there will be some ways to get around that, and I'll talk about that on SuperSite later today. Um, there, are, there are many other minor tweaks and fixes, both visually and under the hood, that really gives the Windows 10 Anniversary update a solid feel. It's a solid upgrade. Uh, if you're on Windows 10 Anniversary, or I'm sorry, if you're on Windows 10 version 15.11, the November update, this is an automatic upgrade, and that's not a bad thing. Um, so I just want to remind you to be sure to check out all of our Windows 10 coverage at the Super Cypher Windows as we continue to share all of our insights with all of you from the last eight months of testing the new OS and watching it develop over that time. So I want you all to take care and stay safe out there on the internet.